This is an HP News Network special report. Okay, YouTubers, anti-nuke activists, and Plume Gate investigators, this is another HP News Network special report, and this is your host, Patrick Penry. And this particular special report is dedicated to and prompted because of the fact now that my wife's father has now been diagnosed with a stage three lung cancer. He has a cancerous tumor. And my understanding is it's partially on the rib cage and then goes into the lung and it's on the other side of the lung. They just got the report back yesterday. I don't know all the details, but I do know that it is a surgery is not going to correct his problem. They're going to hit him with radiation and chemotherapy and he's got about a week before he starts that so he's out on the boat fishing and this report is prompted by when I had to look into his eyes okay and when I saw him tear up and him tilt his head towards the ground and he had to talk about how his life that day they told him just took a spiral down and crashed everything his whole life has just crashed before him okay so if this Special report is dedicated to Papa Bradshaw. <clears throat> okay, the first screen capture we're looking at is directly from Fukushima. This is Unit 3. Okay, and I want to talk today and in this report about aerosolized plutonium and MOX fuel in number 3. This is another subject that's been passed over. It's been suppressed, just like the Unit 4, just like the Plume Gate cover-up. And I want to expose it as best I can. I want to get the information out so when we see these trends begin to occur with these exacerbated cancer rates and last night I searched I typed in lung cancer on the rise and you wouldn't believe what I get back of course they blame it on diesel fuel the World Health Organization has recently classified diesel fuel as a carcinogen conveniently and it's not like they haven't known it for 30 years but they're very clever in their diversionary and their excuses and their other things they want to blame this on, right? Cigarettes, diesel fuel, that kind of stuff, which is ridiculous when you've got aerosolized plutonium being detected in Lithuania from the MOX fuel at Fukushima. Okay, now let's look into this, folks, because this is intolerable, and we are no longer going to tolerate this in this country. You guys need to understand this. This whole thing is about to change. This whole meme is about to change in this country when people begin to grow extremely ill from cancer in very large numbers. Okay, second screen cap. Some of you have seen this one before, but it's critical that I continue to hammer home on this fact that there was radioactive mock sludge, quote, radioactive mock sludge causing access problems, issues on the site. Now, where do you think that mock sludge came from? Well, it came from Unit 3. We're going to learn more on Unit 3 in just a minute. But I just want to give you a background. The access problems were delayed due to mock sludge. Mox has plutonium in it, plutonium, the deadliest substance known to man. Okay, the next screen cap is from March 19th, and it's from the LIAO2 HOC Committee. It's a group of people working together to another LIAO3 HOC Committee. And I'll read the relevant uh, section that is in regards to MOX fuel. The Canadians discussed a report email which listed the total number of rods in each unit's pools, the number of used, new, and irradiated fuel bundles. The Canadians discussed the last startup and shutdown dates. They're looking for to see how hot the fuel is. Unit 1 startup March 20, 2010. Unit 2 startup April 20, 2010. Unit 3 startup January 20, 2010. Unit 4 shutdown November 30, 2010. Unit 5 shutdown September 16, 2010. And Unit 6 shutdown August 15, 2010. Okay, here's where it gets good. There was a discussion on the 32 MOX assemblies in the Unit 3 spent fuel pool and the MOX fuel assemblies placed in the Unit 3 reactor vessel in September 2010. The other countries explain how they individually were evaluating and calculating the release path and dose estimates. They asked if the NRC had revised dose numbers for our source terms. Told them we could discuss at the 1400 call today. So the Canadians are pressing the NRC and saying, are you revising your dose numbers from your source terms, from your sources of radiation, your emanations of radiation? Are you going to revise those dose numbers? Because this is MOX fuel. This is much more serious. You need to make a correction. Did they do it? I sincerely doubt it. Sincerely doubt it. Next screen cap. I'll read to you from the FOIA documents from a phone transcription. We don't get to know these people's name, male participant. You just have to roll with this one. 
male participant, just a question. Chuck said, and it's probably referring to Chuck Casto, Chuck said that they think that unit three pool is dry. Do they still, redacted, redacted, do they still see a vapor plume coming off of unit three? Male participant, negative. Male participant, okay, so they think that all of the steam in the path was the evaporation of the unit three pool and that that's now completed? Male participant, yes. Okay, evidence that unit three pool was also depleted of its water coolant inventory. Next screen cap, this is Chuck Castro speaking. Yes, unit two, they opened that hole. You've probably seen the picture. They opened the hole in the side of the reactor building and it's steaming. Well, although it appears that it's one level, at least one, Richard, what would you say? At least one level below where the spent fuel pool is, which tells us that the whole building is probably full of steam and it's venting out through that hole. Unit three, it looks like it's open to the atmosphere and it's steaming in this photo heavily, which probably means it's by now likely dried out for unit three. Here's another small clip I found the other night with Jack Sko speaking. He says, okay, unit number three, spent fuel pool has a crack and possible loss of inventory. Bruce says, we believe that to be true still. Next screen, cat from an email from April 20th from George Replogle to Bernadette Baca. Subject, good site for high resolution photos of Fukushima. Let me read what I have underline actually I'm reading the wrong I'm reading the top one the bottom one the top one if you guys notice where it says for you right there this is constant throughout the documents I'm glad I made this error let me mention that they are quite aware of the Freedom of Information Act and that later these documents will be poured through by researchers just a handful because it's wildly impopular to talk about this cover-up amongst alternative and mainstream and media right now Okay, but they know that somebody may come back later pouring through these documents and they're going to come across what I'm about to read you now. That's why this second email that comes a little bit later in the day, or actually a number of days later, says for you. I mean, keep in mind, we need to either redact this or you guys need to stop talking about the giving this much information in these freedom. Of, they know they're being recorded, right? That's all I can say on that. Quote, the damage is amazing. In my opinion, Mark's opinion means more. You three had to have had a SFP Zerk fire after the explosion. Had to have had a spent fuel pool Zerk fire after the explosion. Note the condition of the steel girders around the pool. They must have fallen to the top of the pool before the fire, then melted and twisted. Glad this did not happen near Decatur, Alabama. Well, right there, folks, it gives you basically a bit of detective work here and you can figure out what happened we know we had have also had a spent fuel pool zerk fire number three and this guy's here's the information note the condition of the steel girders around the pool they must have fallen to the top of the pool before the fire then melted and twisted okay that makes a lot of sense the earthquake brought it down then when there's a fire it melted that those particular steel girders around the pool and that's his evidence that there was a spent fuel pool fire in number three which means aerosolized emissions went directly into the atmosphere we don't know how long we know in spent fuel pool number four it went on for nine hours and ten minutes at least that they admit in spent fuel pool three we really don't know but again that's where the mox is at the most suppression on information will be on unit three if this is in fact what happened and I have every reason to believe both those two pools ran dry you had a Zerk fire in each one, and you had an incredible amount of curies released into the atmosphere in many forms, but among the forms, one of them would be aerosolized plutonium, ladies and gentlemen. This is very serious. We have got to shut down nuclear power as soon as possible. There is no such thing as national security in America. Point the finger at Iran, and let's worry about their nuclear program. Meanwhile, our nuclear programs are killing thousands, thousands. And let me tell you about Japan. Those are GE's reactors. GE is running the show. GE is behind it all. That's the corporation. That's the big one in the consortium. They call the shots. GE does. And right behind them, you got Arriva. Okay, from a screen cap from the NRC for you documents, Mr. Casto speaking again. Chuck Casto. I don't know. I don't know where they're venting from, but I think there's IR data, infrared data. And I think, and I asked the dose people to try to confirm refractory metals and iodine, whether there's a continuous vent out of two and three. I think NR thinks there's a continuous vent. Well, I know NR thinks there's a continuous vent out of two and three, whether it's from that broken line and suppression pool on unit two, and I think on unit three, 
our infrared data isn't refined enough to tell you where it's coming from, but it may be coming into the stack. But it appears to some people there's a continuous vent out of two and three. Okay, and again, folks, when these Zerk fires happen, there's a massive amount of radiation released into the atmosphere. Models were done at least on 100% on Unit 4. And if they, if they avoided Unit 3, folks, it's because of the seriousness of the MOX fuel, which contains a, percent, a higher level of percentage than your normal uranium fuel rods do. Okay, next screen captures from March 27th. This is like a status update graph type thing. And if you read down the right-hand side, you get a time chronological order of events countermeasures and what they were able to do and it's not much it's just helicopter flights and splashing some water on it which we know was largely ineffective I read something today where John Moniger said that it was at least six days they went without any cooling to spent fuel pool number four and by my calculation Shazam it might be more like nine or ten days did they went without any sufficient kind of cooling and in that period of time whatever is going to happen has already happened folks and so you can see in this graphic right here, spent fuel cooling system. I mean, it's not a color picture here, but those X's would be in red when you find these in color in these documents. External power, none. So basically, as of March 27th, they're still in the same boat. No power, no sufficient cooling, nothing. This is to Unit 3 with the MOX fuel. By the way, Barbara Boxer was the only one in these documents I have found to ask pertinent questions in regards to the MOX fuel. And I'll read that uh, email to you when I get a chance, if I can remember to throw it in one of these special reports. We will go over it. I've covered a Blumenauer letter and, uh, let's see, Markey, and some of these guys ask good questions. Now, Blumenauer, if I'm, Earl Blumenauer is from Oregon, if I remember right, and he's into the whole climate change thing. So he's, he's tied and right on nuclear, but then on the other hand, he believes in the climate change. Does he talk about chemtrails and aerosol engineering and all? I don't know. Some of these guys give you a little good and then not so good at the same time. Thyroid cancer incidents. This is in Belarus, and I'm now pronouncing that particular uh, city right, or uh, county, or whatever it is, that place on the map, Belarus. And you can look at this graph, and we're looking at thyroid cancer incidents. What you want to note in this graph is the shape of the graph itself, those lines that are moving. And as you can see, they begin to rise after a number of years following the Chernobyl incident, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. They're beginning to rise now. Okay, 92, 94, 96, we've got a major increase in thyroid cancer incidence, and it just goes on up to 2002. It's still going up. It's still going up. Now, the next screen cap is also taken, and this is from a... This is from the Bobby One Fatality Index study, which links to another study in the back. And I'll give you the link to that, too, if you want to go in and, and read that as well. And I'll link to the Bobby One study because that's an excellent one you really got to sink your teeth into to get a, just a feeling for the casualties we're going to experience from Fukushima. Okay, thyroid cancer incidents. And this one on the left-hand section of the graph, it goes by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, and then on, and on the right X or Y axis, whichever that one is on the right, 86, 87, it's going up by one year. Now, what we want to look at here is, and in the, both these graphs, what we're looking for is time elapsed before significant increase in cancer or cancers of some type. If you look in this one from 86 to, I don't know, you go right in the middle of that graph right there of the hump around 94, 95, and you see that it's not 10 years later, less than that, cancers are going to rise. There's going to be a significant increase. You're not going to be able to hide this one with Fukushima, considering it was many times worse than Chernobyl. So out of those two graphs, what I want you to take from that is that in the future, if this rings true and is correct, we are expecting a significant rise in cancers. Now, when you look at the World Health Organization, which they have nothing to do with health at all, they protect corporations and they punish us and make us sick is what they do by not protecting the little guy. The WHO went in it recently and said that diesel fuel is carcinogenic and they want to blame it to that. When I was searching last night under rise in lung cancers, I found that every article I read blamed it on cigarettes, every single one, and asked you to stop smoking cigarettes and would not mention nuclear fallout whatsoever. I mean, I left a comment on the one that said, hey, Google Plumegate, because we got aerosolized plutonium detected in Lithuania. So I noticed this obvious pattern of that they avoid the nuclear 
factor and they concentrate on something else, anything else, diesel fuel, cigarettes, your lifestyle. Very clever, very clever. Right after the Fukushima catastrophe, had you Googled Plutonium Tokyo or Radiation Tokyo, okay, what it came back to and what came up on your search was an article about some guy that owned a photography shop and had like radioactive cadmium stored you know, in a bad way down in his basement. And so had you searched for that, that's what you would have found. They're very careful at diverting, distracting, and hiding this information from you. But Patrick Penry's here now, folks. Now check this out. Radionuclides from the Fukushima accident in the air over Lithuania, measurement and modeling approaches. Now this is from late March, early April of 2011. I'm going to skip right to the bottom of this abstract. And let's talk about what we see here. High split backward trajectories and meteorological data were applied for interpretation of activity variations of measured radionuclides observed at the site of investigation. This would be in Vilnius, Lithuania. BE and 212 PB activity concentrations and their ratios were used as tracers of vertical transport of air masses. Fukushima data were compared with the data obtained during the Chernobyl accident and the post Chernobyl period. The activity concentrations of I-131 and cesium-137 were found to be by four orders of magnitude lower as compared to the Chernobyl accident. The activity ratio of cesium-134, cesium-137 was around one with small variations only. The activity ratio of 238 plutonium, 239 and 240 plutonium in the aerosol sample was 1.2 indicating a presence of the spent fuel of different origin than that of the Chernobyl accident. Okay, and don't get too hung up on the fact they're saying they tested four times lower magnitude of the iodine-131 and cesium. Again, where are they in the jet stream? How does this all play out? What we want to concentrate on here is the fact they did detect aerosolized plutonium. And if they detected it in Lithuania, if they detected it in Lithuania, I wonder, I wonder if that Pacific jet stream carried it all across North America first, and I wonder if they knew all about this and they covered it up in a massive multi-agency cover-up, the largest the world has ever known. No wonder everybody's avoiding talking about it. I mean, my information's for free, remixable, everything, but no one wants to jump on the back of this beast and tackle it. And that's what we're going to do, folks, because unless we shut down every nuclear plant around this globe, expect more of the same. And might I add right now, I've got a special report coming up that's going to absolutely just shock you. It is going to shock you, folks. What's in this report? Well, mm, I'll put it this way. I have some evidence that is actually probably the most significant evidence we have to date that Fukushima might have not been an accident. Okay, and if you look for this special report coming up, it'll be worded such that you'll know it when you see it. And just let me put my evidence forward, please. Okay, next screen capture. This is a simulation by datapoke.org for TEPCO, and you can look in here, and this was plutonium-239 over North America from 322 is when this simulation began. Okay, just have a look at Florida right there where my father-in-law lives, and he's an outdoorsman, he's a fisher, he's always out on the boat, and now he has stage 3 lung cancer tumor, and he cannot cut it out. Mm. Just look at that, folks. This is what... Our government is the most criminal government in cahoots with industry we have ever seen. This is a crime of such magnitude and injustice that is incalculable that I cannot express how many will die. And they're getting away with it because they control all the media. They control all these guys on YouTube and Facebook and e, e News and RT and Alex Jones and all these guys that won't go into the level of detail. Guys, I wrote two books virtually. Unit 4, Fear and Loathing is virtually a book. Okay? And... Something wicked this way comes. There's 180 pages. going to be about 250 soon enough when I go back in and add my second collection of evidence just to bolster my case and make it even more concrete. In their own words. In their own words. You should be angry, folks. You should be angry with our modern media of all sectors across the board. Well, other than Miss Milgy the Clown and Kevin Blanche and a handful of others. That's it. You know, plenty of folks have to talk about Fukushima. If they don't, they're going to look like total controlled opposition. So that's all they talk about is the radiation or the stuff we already know, the leaks going into the ocean. That We know that now. Hey, I broke that back in the day. I'm the one that broke the NRC for you documents that proved it. And then mainstream media comes out and says, yeah, it's leaking. Okay? So they're avoiding that. They don't want to get into the cover-up. They want to talk about what we already know about Fukushima.
what I do in these special reports is I'm giving you stuff most people have never seen and don't know anything about. It's not on mainstream. You're not going to Alex Jones, Russia Today ain't going to talk about it. It's not in the realm of information in social media or online. You cannot find this anywhere. There is suppression of such a magnitude, and that in and of itself is high treason of the highest degree. And I think you guys agree with me, too. I really do. Okay, now I'm going to read to you from an article I wrote. Oh, gosh, I've been writing about this since February 2012. This has been March, April, something to 2012, March, April 2012. And in particular, I want to read to you the quote I've got on Mox Fuel. Let me just read the whole screen cap I have. Compounding the problem, the controversial plutonium-containing Mox Fuel, that stands for mixed oxide, mixed oxide, fuel was being used at Fukushima. And by the way, i got to throw it in there. Lindsey Graham, God, what a treasonous scumbag he is. He wants to bring all that to South Carolina, and it's in the works. It's in the works, my understanding. It's coming. Mox Fuel. Get to know Mox Fuel so you can communicate with that guy and let him know he's lost his mind and he's treasonous. How dangerous is Mox Fuel? Consider this quote. Reactor 3 uses mixed uranium-plutonium oxide fuel in the core. According to Edwin Lyman of the Union of Concerned Scientists, quote, the use of MOX generally increases the consequences of severe accidents in which large amounts of radioactive gas and aerosol are released compared to the same accident in a reactor using non-MOX fuel. Because of this, the number of latent cancer fatalities resulting from an accident could increase by as much as a factor of five for a full core of MOX fuel compared to the same accident with no MOX. Five times as dangerous. And folks, I've been clear, 170, they, they tested at 90 miles, the same level of radiation they tested 170 miles. And then a guy says that that plume went inland and swept across Tokyo. An aerosolized plume of plutonium swept across Tokyo. They don't want you to know that. They don't want... The games, Olympic Games in Tokyo, that is madness. I can't believe it when I saw that. I really can't. Okay, on to my next uh, critical section here. Well, let me read the other part. Thanks to high-resolution photos available on the website pinktentacle.com, even the casual observer can see that the number three reactor has sustained the greatest damage. Furthermore, according to Amina Khan's Los Angeles Times interview of Robert Alvarez, okay, he's... Uh, quite a scientist right there and very credible, a former senior policy advisor for the U.S. Energy Department, former now, and probably for a reason he had to get out of there and start telling the truth about these spent fuel pools. The number three reactor may have experienced something other than a hydrogen explosion. Quote, they were irradiating plutonium in Unit 3, which experienced the biggest explosion, he said. In fact, the explosion was so massive that investigators found fuel rod fragments a mile away leading to speculation that a supercritical fission event may have also occurred, Alvarez said. And we know that in Unit 4 we had debris 13 miles, chunks of debris spread out many miles. Okay, continuing. All of this is bad news, but if the meltdowns had taken place at a nuclear plant in Australia, the effects of fallout on the U.S. would have been greatly reduced based simply on the actual physical distance between the two points and the location of the world's jet streams. That's very important, folks because we are in the Pacific jet stream. In this special report, I'm going to show you a sneak preview of some of the rooftop grabs from our nuclear power plants proving that we were inundated with radiation from Fukushima. The unfortunate reality is that the United States is in direct line with a powerful jet stream that flows from Japan over Hawaii and to the west coast. The northern Pacific jet stream is well known to commercial pilots who use the currents to save fuel like a kayaker saves energy paddling downstream. So we're in direct line of fire. The travesty, the criminality, ladies and gentlemen, occur when we are not given warnings to stay out of the rain and take countermeasures. Why? It would have reflected very poorly on the nuclear industry. We'd have, we would have all been in the streets. Moms and housewives and people that watched The View and football would have put their beer down and gone out into the streets to end this madness. Okay? That's why they cannot, above all costs, let you know what really happened at Fukushima. And again, I'm telling you now, I've got evidence now, finally, that well, unless you're a coincidence theorist, you are going to actually begin to wonder if there is not some scheme on this planet to destroy the ecological systems. Remember, folks, in 1997, William S. Cohen, then Secretary of Defense, five-star general, said that even now, eco-terrorists 
are setting off earthquakes and volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. That's almost an exact quote. Okay, next screen cap, and here's the sneak preview of some of the rooftop grabs. I'm going to have a special report coming up on that. What you want to keep in mind with these numbers here on the rooftop grabs, it's not constantly drawing in air all day long and sampling it. My understanding is it will open up, it will take in a sample, and it will measure that. But it's not running continuously throughout the day. So the sample, the concentration, is going to be low compared to what you're going to be receiving as a human breathing constantly. Let's say you live in California and you're outside during the 18th to the 28th when the plume, worst of the plume is sweeping through, you would have been breathing 24-7, hopefully, or you're dead. You've been breathing around the clock. These measuring devices only take in a certain amount of air to measure. Now, a great analogy, I guess, probably even better would be to think about some of these air filter tests they did early on where they said, send us your air filter, we're going to test it. That car is not running constant, okay? So if you run the car for an hour and send them that air filter, they're going to detect a much lower level of radiation than if you ran that car for a day or two days and then sent them the air filter. So what we look at these rooftop grabs and what you need to get out of this is that this proves beyond any doubt. And this was suppressed information in a password protected database. Y'all tip your hat to Shazam for me having this before me right now. Uh, these works could not be done without his help. And so we look at this right now and this is the proof folks we got slammed. If you look in the documents, they constantly test and measure and talk about anything and everything but plutonium. Usually it's iodine because that has a what eight day half-life or cesium it has a much shorter half-life. There is a huge vacuum in these documents or in the NRC or in anyone talking about nuclear power. They don't talk about plutonium. I try to stay as calm as I can, folks. I promise you, I'm doing the best I can, really. Trust me, people I know now are getting cancer and dying, so I'm just trying to maintain as best I can. Okay, this screen capture here, this is my test. I sampled the rainwater myself. I sent it in. It was for a chemtrail test, but it came back positive for strontium, 0 0.016 milligrams per liter for strontium-90. This was from 3-15-2012, almost exactly a year after the Fukushima catastrophe, and in Gainesville, Florida, I am detecting strontium in my rainwater, and I want to know why. Because do I not have a right to have clean water, rainwater, if I so decide to collect rainwater, that's my God-given right. It's like the chemtrail planes. They're denying me my God-given sunlight, and that's a fact. It's a blasphemous crime against all humanity. Well, I can't get clean drinking water out of the rain? Well, you'll have to get it from the city of Gainesville and get your fluoride, my friend. <laughs> really, seriously. Okay, and I'm going to end up back on a screen cap. There's Unit 3 again. I mean, just look at it. Look at it and, and keep this in mind. Aerosolized gases can be carried aloft to very high altitudes, very high elevations, and they're carried around the globe. I showed you where as far away as Lithuania detected aerosolized plutonium. We all breathed it in. We all breathed it in. Keep your eye out for an increase in severe cancers. As I was searching, I came across this breast cancer on the West Coast. They say it's a new aggressive form they have not seen before. It's very aggressive. It's in the bones. Well, check it out. My father-in-law also has stage three, and it, as I understand, it's into the rib or on the rib, or they cannot operate or having to take out that rib, and plus it's already spread to the other side. Stage three. Stage three. Okay, that, I'll just end on that. This is dedicated to Papa Bradshaw. I pray every night, every night. That's all I can do. All right, this is Hattrick Penry. This has been another special report, obviously dedicated to Papa Bradshaw. And I hope you guys got something out of this and spread this news around because we are beginning to feel the real effects of the Fukushima fallout catastrophe, the greatest cover-up we've ever seen, the most horrific crime hiding this from people. Are they going to get away with it? Are we going to let them get away with it? Okay, Patrick Penry, thanks for joining me for this special episode. Over and out. This has been an HP News Network special report. Uh, we need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.